It's a new curb blog with a brand new attitude And I hope that you'll watch them all And listen to what I will say do 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 I enjoy that song Anyway, welcome back. We're continuing onward with Pokecember, my month long of Pokemon related curb blogs for the month of December. Uh, today uh, is actually one that I've been sitting on. I know I say that a million goddamn times, but a question I've been sitting on from a user who submitted uh, asking about the Pokemon anime series. So this question comes from Commander Awesome saying, Hey, Chris, can I suggest you doing a curb long on the best seasons of the Pokemon anime? And here I am finally. I think this might have actually been like the question that got me to do. Uh, Pokesember in the first place, or at least like had the idea for. I've, I've had a few other ones that I was thinking about, uh, other, other Pokemon related topics, but I digress. So in the first one of these I did uh, for the month, I talked about how I got into the franchise in the first place, and part of that was through the show, uh, where I had uh, an animanga of the second episode called Pokemon Emergency. Da, 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 da. Uh, that was in an issue of Nintendo Power, part of the Pokemon Power six-month uh, uh, kind of special mini-magazine thing they had. And one morning I saw, uh, this was back when the show was actually being syndicated, and Kids WB, or rather WB in general, back when that was what it was, uh, before, long before the, the age of the CW network, um, was uh, airing the show in syndication. It was one of many channels at the time. I think they'd even, they even had like listings for where the show was going to be airing uh, in that Pokemon Power mini-magazine thing. But either way, uh, so I happened to see the, the same episode of the comic that I happened to have, and I was like, whoa, what is this? And I got deep into it, and uh, I would wake up every morning on, on this was back when they would show uh, five episodes uh, every week, Monday through Friday, at 7 o'clock in the morning on Kids WB. Oh, I'm turning into commercial now. Uh, so this was actually before new episodes were airing on Saturday mornings, which is kind of really how it's been for the longest time now. And uh, I followed the entire show. This, this was the first run of, I don't know, it was like 50-something episodes or so. I can't remember how many exactly. But it was up until the March of the Executor Squad. Da, 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 da. Every time to do that. Uh, where they, they were just showing those like first whatever number episodes uh, all looped over and over until eventually Kids WB, uh, Warner Brothers was like, okay, you know what? We want this. It was kind of like what Cartoon Network did with DBC after a while where we were like, you know, we, we want this for us. We want this because we can tell that this is going to be huge. And uh, so after that, Kids WB started airing new episodes, uh, sometimes on, on weekdays as well, but uh, most often on Saturday mornings uh, every weekend. And uh, from there on out, I followed the show for a very, very, very long time. I want to say it was right up until uh, around the, just before the Battle Frontier arc, which I'll get to that. So this is going to be kind of a combination of my experiences with the show itself, as well as my, uh, my thoughts on particular seasons. Um, so I guess to start off with the beginning, uh, the first season, of course, uh, you know, as most people that grew up with it and otherwise, even people who've gone back and watched it, uh, solid, solid bunch of episodes. I actually own all of the first season of Pokemon on both, uh, VHS and DVD because I wanted a, a digital copy of it way later when they put out the, what, what I think they've repackaged them as the Indigo League, uh, episodes is what they kind of call season one now. But uh, yeah, lots and lots of fond memories of getting up every, every weekday morning and, uh, and watching those. Uh, a lot of classic episodes. A lot of, uh, th there are some also, I will admit, some antiquated things about kind of the way that the show was. Uh, they still, th the show was very, very different back then. And my kind of general opinion, I've, I've stolen this from someone else, but uh, I think that the show is just as good now. I think it's just very, very different. And people, as I've often found, don't often like things that are different. Uh, especially when it's something different from what it is that they grew up with. Um, I objectively, I think that they're both good. Of course, I have different types of, you know, childhood memories with the first season because that was what I watched as it started. And I consider myself very lucky that I, you know, as with growing up with the franchise as it came to America in the first place, I feel very fortunate that I watched the show when it first started. And it was, it was a very kind of magical time where just all of this stuff all at the same time had hit the U.S. And, uh, you know, everybody was all kind of on the same page and we were all excited about the same kind of things. I remember also uh, finding out about those, those five particular episodes, two of which I think later aired. Uh, the, uh, the, the five episodes that were banned, uh, I've had maybe, maybe three out of the five of them aired, but the, the ones that didn't, of course, were the ones with, uh, the Porygon, you know, fiasco, the, this, that caused the seizures in Japan at that time, as well as the, uh, the actual episode where they go to the Safari Zone, and there's the guy with the, you know, little six-shooter waving, waving in Ash's face. <laughs> Those aside, uh, some particular favorites of mine from back in the day, uh, right, I guess the, 
kind of mini arc of episodes involving the 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 Saint Anne or SSN, uh, as well as the uh, the Island of the Giant Pokemon, and then going to uh, the what was like I forget the little beach town where they were stuck at for a while. One of the uh, lost episodes or or skipped over episodes at that time was uh, in that part of the show as well. Uh, and of course the, uh, the leading up to the Pokemon League, a lot of those episodes when like Ash had gotten back from uh, from defeating uh, Team Rocket and getting his eighth badge and training for the Pokemon League for a bunch of episodes. Those I actually think I might even like some of those more than the actual Pokemon League episodes uh, at that time. And uh, and then of course also the gym leader fights are always great. The the Ash versus Blaine, uh, i.e. Charizard versus Magmar, is definitely my favorite. Uh, fight scene of the first season, hands down. Um, Orange Islands, I remember, was it was a fun little tie-over. Uh, I think I gave a lot less shit to Tracy at the time because because he had a Scyther, so therefore he was automatically cool to me. And also Meryl, because he was one of the, the few uh, Gold and Silver era Generation 2 Pokemon that were still being uh, teased, you know. So, uh, of course, that I, I gave him a little bit of a break, but I was very happy when Brock came back. And kicking off the Johto season, uh, the, the first of the, of the three Johto seasons that they had uh, all kind of in tandem, uh, was kind of a cool start because they actually had Ash and Gary having a fight with uh, Pikachu and Eevee. That was a tense situation. Da, 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 da. That's one of Mike Hecht's favorite ones to say. Uh, it was fantastic. And, um, and, and, oh, oh and, and of course, having Brock come back as well uh, after all that time of being calm, which... Seemed kind of weird in retrospect as to why that happened. I've heard different stories about that, but that aside. Um, the three Johto seasons, I actually like to give a lot of credit to. And even though there's a lot of them that I don't even have, like, distinct memories of, like, specific favorite episodes necessarily, uh, which I know because it's like, oh, you just listed a bunch of season one ones that you all remembered. Yes, but the difference is I really, really enjoyed the writing of the of, – Johto was season three, four, and five. That was Johto Journeys, Johto League Champions – and uh, Master Quest, I believe. Uh, those in particular, I, I remember distinctly having very, very, very funny dialogue. There was, uh, there was one particular scene. <laughs> it was, uh, what the hell was it? it oh, it was, it was the one where this, the Smeargles, uh, they were owned by a painter, and they were literally painting a, a town that was made of marble houses uh, with their little tails. And Jesse and, and all the guys at Team Rocket were trying to uh, make copies of the artwork uh, that they could sell and make lots of money off of. And she was looking at the copies and being like, oh, this is, this is terrible. This is stupid. What are we doing? You can't sell and, and, and make a career out of art with, with a bunch of cheap copies. And then James pops in with, I don't know, Jesse, if Andy Warhol did it, I don't see why we can. And I'm like, that's, that's too smart for Pokemon, and yet I love it. Like, and there was also uh, some, some particularly funny moments between Misty and Brock in, in that era. With um, There was one episode where there's a girl who falls in love with Brock and has this whole thing where, like, she names people after, like, a portmanteau of three different Pokemon or whatever. Her name was, like, Tamaku, I think. And uh, Misty was trying to, like, jump on. Dude, you have a girl who's attracted to you. Like, get on that. Don't don't turn your face away from this. What, what is wrong with you? And then, uh, oh, what was the other? Oh, 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 what, um, they go to Ecruteak City and they meet the, the EV sisters, uh, which were actually some cool characters. I liked them. And uh, Brock has, like, the same animation of him, like, going after them, like, over and over and, like, declaring, like, oh, I'm in love with you and you're the only one for me. And then it said he does it five times. And then they come back and he's like, oh, Ash, I I'm in love with all of them and they're all in love with me. And Ash is like, well, you're half right. <laughs> like, just shit like that was so funny to me. And it was so, it was so different than, like, the way that the, the first season was written. It was just kind of a different sensibility, I think, by the time that they got into, like, this place of comfortability with producing the show at that time. So the Johto seasons, those three in particular, are amongst my favorite. And of course, leading up into the finale, which was an awesome six-on-six -six battle between Ash and Gary, the one that we had always been wanting. And for those of you who haven't seen it, please go look up those episodes. You can probably find them, I think, on like the Pokemon app. And uh, I, think I think you can probably buy those episodes on like, iTunes and stuff like that. But... Um, Th that I think it was two or three episodes that they split up the Ash versus Gary stuff in. The final battle being Ash's Charizard and finding out that Gary's starter that he took from the very first episode and the whole time was Squirtle. And it being Ash as red with Charizard and Gary as blue with Blastoise. That final fight is so goddamn amazing. It's really cool, and I definitely I recommend going back and watching really all of those seasons. They all incredibly hold up. I, I would say just as much, maybe if not more than the first season even. The three, uh, I guess technically four uh, seasons of Pokemon Advance 
uh, like Ruby and Sapphire, like that Generation 3 as a whole, wasn't crazy about. Uh, I, I kind of stopped watching the show close to when uh, the advanced season was uh, kind of, I think, being over. I think I, I, I can't even remember, actually, if I saw the... No, you know what? I did. I do remember because Masamune, or uh, Morrison, uh, Sean Schemmel's character, who is played by Goku's Japanese actress as well, it was kind of funny. Uh, I did see those episodes, so I didn't make it to the end of... The, the, the Hoenn League, as it were, uh, I definitely stopped around Battle Frontier. And, and before everybody crucifies me, it wasn't, because of, it wasn't just because of the, uh, the cast change, because considering I know and have worked with almost all of them at some point in some capacity, so th there's no negative bias then. But it, it was also like I wasn't really all that enthused about uh, the Ruby and Sapphire video games, and I was kind of falling by the wayside, which I kind of regret because, you know, moving past that, there's not a whole lot to say about Generation 3's stuff, but I, I remember well, I wasn't crazy about May and Max, to be honest. I found Misty to be written a little bit funnier, not just because, oh man, season one, gen one for life or whatever, like, because there are other characters we've had on the show that I'll get to later that I do really like a lot. Um, May, I kind of got used to after a while, and Max, I think uh, I grew a little bit more attached to after the Jirachi movie, which I'll talk about in another career blog. But, um, yeah, they were fine. Like, it was, it was an interesting experiment. I think that Pokemon X and Y, which I'll also get to later, uh, did a lot better of a job at the four-person traveling party for the show, to be honest. Um, but, uh, but, you know, it was a cool experiment, and, you know, the show was definitely beginning to change. And I kind of regret uh, missing out on a lot of uh, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl because I feel like that was really the, the beginning of the show starting to do more overarching plots because... I got back into the show when I booked my character, Corey, uh, kind of, I want to say like two-thirds into the Diamond and Pearl series. I think that was the, because Diamond and Pearl was, I think, three different seasons, if I'm remembering correctly. But either way, um, I came in, I think, during the second of those three seasons, <laughs> and I started watching some, some more stuff from there and caught up on a few uh, older episodes and everything like that. Uh, that was when Tom Whalen had taken over on, on directing the show. Uh, they had moved into a different studio after the cast had changed and everything. But I was following it for a while, and I was seeing a lot of the stuff happening with, like, Team Galactic and all that, and uh, the, the rival character of that season was Paul, who, from what I've been told, actually had, like, some of the biggest uh, developmental arcs in the entire show because he went from a complete douchebag to being, like, a halfway decent human being and learning how to actually care about these creatures. Not to mention the Team Galactic uh, plot of, like, trying to get all these different legendary Pokemon and, like, do all these things with like time and space and whatnot like and plus the the actual characters were kind of interesting with uh, Cyrus as the leader and the all the little planetary uh, you know young characters like kind of working underneath him and everything uh, were really cool and I was I was kind of digging as I was uh, watching the rest of it with also with uh, Detective Looker who was hilarious uh, following along with it for a while I was like this is this is kind of cool I'm into this and uh, and then kind of transitioning next into what might possibly be. Nah, I don't know if it's my favorite ever. I, I think because I like it for different reasons, but um, I watched almost all of Pokemon Black and White. I was following that show for a long time. I auditioned for it originally. I didn't book anything. Uh, I played a very minor character in one episode, like way later during the uh, episode N uh, storyline. But I was following Black and White for a long time and uh, I'm definitely catching all like the major episodes and everything. The thing that I loved about that was not only did they continue on with having like an overarching story that the, the characters could follow for a while, uh, other than obviously the fact that you know we, we missed out on some stuff because of the two episodes that uh, were cut because of the disaster that happened in Japan at the time, uh, the, you know, the earthquake and the tsunami and everything, which is completely understandable, obviously, uh, you know, wanting to be sensitive to you know, the times, of course. Uh, but, but that aside, um, having like that story, and not to mention more specifically and more importantly, having recurring characters... Uh, in Pokemon Season 1, like, you, they, there'd be an episode where Ash, and Mist Ash, Misty, and Brock would meet a person with a particular Pokemon, and we'd never see that person again except for very minor exceptions, and that was it. And, and like, there was no, like, you know, payoff with any of that stuff at any point where, like, oh, Ashley, oh, I'll, I'll come back and I'll see you again, and we'll see each other at the Pokemon League or whatever. In Pokemon Black and White, the coolest thing was by the end of that series of, I think, the four seasons that they did of it went on a little bit longer than the other ones. Um, there was an entire cast of recurring characters that the show had introduced and people had gotten attached to, and it was awesome because the, uh, the Unova League uh, was, um, was all comprised of characters that you had met and gotten attached to over the course of the entire show for, like, multiple years. So as I was watching the black and white story unfold, I was realizing, wow, like, they're doing a lot of stuff in the show now 
all these like you know 10 15 years later that the original series never even touched before uh, and not to mention the other thing that I, I really enjoyed was the the traveling party of of that series was really strong particularly uh iris i felt had uh, a lot of the same kind of uh, like solid comedy behind her that uh, that Misty did, um, where you know she treats Ash like a little kid and you know and has that kind of complex with them, but maybe still has a little bit of a thing for him, maybe or at least it Im- implied or such or whatever. Uh, although that's that's more about Serena, which will again we'll get to her. Uh, but Iris was really she she made me laugh, and Eileen Stevens, who actually played opposite to me as the part of Lyra in my episodes, uh, went on to book that character, and she was stupendous in, in that role. Uh, Jason Griffith, I, I felt kind of bad for her with Silen because Silen, I feel like, was a character that was really difficult to like translate in terms of like not like the dialogue, but like culturally, because he's like a host club kind of guy and he's like a sommelier, and so he was kind of just like I'm a guy in in the show, and he didn't really. I feel like maybe he didn't get to live up to his full potential because we have to keep him like as understandable for like little kids getting up on Saturday morning as possible. Uh, not not to insult the writing or anything, but it's just like again, it's a cultural difference of like that character just doesn't come across the same kind of way. So didn't didn't love Silent, but I did like the dynamic overall of Ash, Iris, and Silent with uh, Pikachu and Axio as the two uh, you know outside of the Pokeball characters. Going back a little bit, Dawn was all right. She was a little bit better than May, a little bit more interesting, but she, I still wasn't wasn't my favorite of the protagonist uh, ladies that they had constantly been switching out. Uh, I will say it was nice to kind of uh, change things up with having Brock out for a little while and also kind of, you know, doing some new things with Team Rocket as well. Uh, but yeah, Black and White was fantastic. And then, of course, the episode N stuff where N joined in for a little while. Having other characters join with the crew uh, for a while I, f- I felt was really interesting. And that it reminded me of like back when they did that with Todd for a while when Pokemon Snap was coming out. Because uh, that's kind of the purpose of my character was to do that, more or less. But anyway, uh, last but not least is the X and Y series. And I admit that I have not been following it uh, as much as I probably should be. But I, I was definitely watching like the first like maybe 10 episodes or so as it was premiering on Cartoon Network at the time. People have been telling me that uh, the overarching story and uh, character development of that series, uh, as I think it's on its second season by now, I believe... Uh, has been possibly even the best the show that has has ever been uh, since the beginning, which is incredible. Uh, but I was I was really enjoying what I was seeing, and the the thing that I took away from it the most that made me like really happy about it was the new traveling party. This was the case where they were going to have four characters on the on the crew, uh, like with Pokemon Advance. But the dynamic between them this time is much much more interesting. Um, the fact that Serena, in her case, is actually the first of the traveling party characters who legitimately like. Canonly, uh, that's a word, uh, has uh, has feelings for Ash and like kind of seeing where that's going with the two of them is actually really intriguing and I'm I'm curious about like where that might go in the future for sure. Uh, Clement I think is really interesting. He definitely translates a lot better and he's a quirky, fun little guy. Uh, Mike Lichio does a really funny job on him. He beat me out for that part. I was really close to, to booking Clement when I auditioned for him, but uh, Mike Lichio is is awesome. Really, really nice guy. And he was he was a former fan of Pokemon as well, like back in the day. Uh, and then last, but certainly not least, Bonnie is, like, the best thing to happen to that show in ages. Because, my God, she's so adorable and so fu- She is, like, the funniest main character in all of Pokemon to me. And I love Team Rocket as well, don't get me wrong. I know that's blasphemous to say. But Bonnie is just so well-roundedly, like, adorable and funny and likable and entertaining. I just, I love her. She she is definitely, like, one of my new all-time favorite uh, characters, and, and particularly the anime interpretation of her, because I know that in the, in the video game she's just kind of around as like Clem's little sister and all that. But either way, um, yeah, so that's kind of everything. You know, I, also I'll give one more little bit of credit to just Ash and Pikachu. You know, because I know that with a lot of other like by the toys kind of Saturday morning uh, type of anime series like this, you know, often when they go to a new generation, they get completely new characters, like completely new protagonists. And I know a lot of people, are, oh, he's still ten years old and blah blah blah, he still hasn't learned. You know what, my, my, I don't want to spend a whole thing on that, but my whole interpretation of the, the deal about Ash and Pikachu is that they're, they're blank slate enough to be interpretationable and, and like for a kid to relate to, but they still are really fun and entertaining and, and just as iconic as any other iconic like American cartoon character, I, I would say, in, in terms of like our culture specifically. And I, 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 I think I once heard the description of like changing Ash and Pikachu for Pokemon is like, taking the golden arches from McDonald's and like flipping them sideways and doing that or something and just changing that out. It just seems weird. And I don't know. I still like them for what they are. And, uh, you know, I think that there's still always a new generation of kids that, that are going to be introduced to whatever the newest season is. 
and experience the show that way and love it for what it is, you know? And if anything, maybe they technically have it better than us than, than how we had it when we were kids. Who knows? But, and, but it doesn't also take away from those classic episodes. They're still always there for people to enjoy for what they are. And, uh, and I love it all. I'm, I, I love the Pokemon anime series. I think it, it's completely deserving of being the number one anime property in the world still, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, that's my answer, exclamation point to your question, Commander <laughs> Awesome. Uh, so that's it. In the uh, comments below, please let me know of your thoughts about the Pokemon anime series, your favorite episodes, your favorite seasons, your favorite uh, main characters or recurring characters, anything at all. Let me know if you have suggestions for future Pokemon curb log related topics to do in the month of December. Leave a comment about that too or hit me up on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, whatever you feel like. That's it for me. I will catch you all later in an Ultra Ball or a Master Ball, but I've only got one of those and I'm saving it for Articuno and not Mewtwo. Don't judge me. Bye.